All right, guys, so today we'll be doing a pre-lab video for lab two, Introduction to Stereo Nets. Before we start this video and get into Stereo Nets, I'd just like to go over um, how this lab will relate to our field trip last Friday to Ben Burton Park. So at Ben Burton Park, remember, we were using our Breton compasses to take the strike and dibs bedding planes, um, which are both joints, fractures, as well as foliation. So today we're going to learn how do we put those um, bedding planes as well as lineations, which we'll talk about later, into a format where we can run analyses on them to solve a geologic problem or find trends in the data. So first let's go over strike and dip. So here we have an inclined plane where this plane has been lifted up a length L, which you can see here, which is same on both sides. Um, across that plane we have strike which runs parallel at an even elevation and 90 degrees to that we have dip. So if we pull that out we have a elevation to our plane. Our plane comes down as, at a diagonal and with a horizontal uh, plane across the top we have our dip angle as well as dip direction. So what we'll be doing today is using that strike and dip to plot planes in a stereo net. So moving on, we are going to um, imagine our plane in 3D space. So here's our plane that we were just talking about. It has some orientation to where it has a strike and dip. Remember, say the plane is oriented like this. Our strike is going to be somewhere like here. 90 degrees of that is dip. And remember, if you're ever in the field and you are having a trouble, you know, a hard time figuring out dip, pour some water on it. It'll take the fastest route down. That is your dip and dip direction. So moving on to taking our planes and putting them into a stereo net form or a stereo net format, we have our plane here. Once again, remember it's dipping at some angle. We want to try to visualize this in 3D, put it into a stereo net, and then be able to analyze um, the plane in 2D. So what we'll do is we'll have a bowl like this. And if you can imagine this bowl has a north, south, east, and west we know that the way this plane is oriented, it should fit within those coordinates. So if we were to have a plane that was striking north-south, so striking north to south, that plane should fit in here. Say that plane had a dip of 90 degrees vertical, that would be represented by this plane in this bowl right here say that dip was horizontal or zero this plane would still be oriented like this and it would be horizontal we can do the same if it was striking a different way say it was striking east west say the plane um, was dipping 90 degrees that plane would fit in vertical east west as it did north south so if we were visualizing this and you had you know multiple planes you could see how planes would be oriented in many different um, I guess orientations and so what this is kind of visualizing is we're taking this from 3D and when we work with stereo nets we're going to be looking at it in 2D so what does that mean if we take our plane and put it back north south like so with a vertical dip there's two things you want to realize. You want to realize that it's still striking 0 to 180, but you also want to realize and visualize what this would look like um, if we were looking at the top. So if I was to rotate this towards the camera and we are just looking at the top of the bowl now, you can see that we have a circle and we have a line. So remember in 3D space uh, we have a plane if you transform that space to 2D space, we have a line. So our plane, which was in 3D, has now become a line in 2D when we look directly at the center of this bowl. 
Remember, it has a vertical dip, so it's just a straight line from north to south. But if you change that dip in any way, say you make it about 45 degrees, you can see where there is now an arcuate shape in the back of the bowl representing our 2D line if this was on a stereo net and you can follow it all the way back here. And then again if you follow the line that the plane is making with the back of the bowl and you keep rotating it up, what's happening? Well, our dip is getting shallower and shallower until it's horizontal. And it will be important once we start working on stereo nets to come back to this so you can start visualizing you know, some of these different orientations that we're going to um, be working with. And once again, this plane can be oriented, or now line, since we're in 2D space, can be oriented any which way. So again, if your line was striking um, some angle into the northeast and some angle to the southwest, but it's still vertical, it's represented the same way. Striking northeast, striking southwest, vertical dip. It's a straight line across. And then if we put it back into 3D, we can see that our plane is vertical and it's striking northeast to southwest. The next uh, lesson into this is figuring out, okay, you know, what if we have, what if we have a bunch of these planes in here? You know, if you do field work of any sort, you need to have, you know, hundreds to thousands of measurements. The problem you're going to run into is putting a hundred to you know thousands of planes into a stereo net, it's going to fill up pretty quick. So there's a way that we use another um, stereo net tool to kind of take care of a whole bunch of data, and this is what we call poles. So a pole, let's take this out for a second. Here's our plane. A pole is just a line in 3D space, remember that? We're in 3D space right now. A pole is a line. A pole is going to be 90 degrees Oops, that's all right. 90 degrees from our, um, or sorry, it'll make a 90 degree angle with our plane. So why would we do this? Why are we, why are we you know, adding this pull on? Well, if we think about this again, in 3D space, we have a plane and we also have a line marking the pole. If we move this plane and line into 2D space, we go from a plane to a line and a line to a point. So if you have a whole bunch of data on your stereo net, it's a lot easier to recognize trends in that data, figure out your geologic problems if you have a whole bunch of points compared to a whole bunch of lines, which would be our planes. And this will make more sense as we move into the stereo net. You may have to come back and revisit this part. Um, it's just an easy way to, um, to visualize this.